All right, Mr. Mayor, we are live. The floor is yours. Great. Um, good afternoon. This is the City of Morro Bay City Council. Um, this is a special meeting. It is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. It's 3.30 p.m. This meeting is being held via teleconference, and I'll ask the clerk if she could establish a quorum, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Addis? Here. Council Member Ford? Here. Council Member Heller? Here. Council Member Barton? Here. And Mayor Hetty? Present. Thank you. Um, I will call the meeting to order. And uh, pursuant to Assembly Bill 361, 2021-22 uh, in the Government Code Section 54953, this meeting will be conducted telephonically through Zoom and broadcast live on Channel 20 and streamed on the city website. Please be advised that pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 in Government Code Section 54953, and to ensure the health and safety of the public by limiting human contact that could spread the COVID-19 virus. The Veterans Hall will not be open for this meeting. Thank you and welcome everybody. Um, this is a special meeting to appoint uh, members to several of our advisory committees. I, I will say up front um, to our council, unfortunately, our two applicants for the um, Recreation and Parks Commission have uh, withdrawn their applications. So we will not be doing um, any interviews for Parks and Rec. That's Mr. Lewis Ramos and Zachary Warner. Just tell you that up front. So thank you for that. Um, uh, some instructions from um, the inception of Zoom. We've changed our format just a little, not significantly. Um, we have two advisory boards today that we will be um, looking at applicants for. First is our uh, Citizens Finance Advisory Committee. We have four vacancies and four applicants for that. And then we also have our Harbor Advisory Board. And for that, the right page here, we have um, two vacancies, one for the South Bay Los Osos resident um, at large, and that uh, has two applicants and one vacancy. And then we have a member at large, a representative for which we have one vacancy and one applicant. And we will be doing those um, separately. Um, normally, we um, ask each individual council member um, to have one question for um, each applicant and the, that question being the same for each applicant. In other words, um, ask one question and then I'll call on the applicants to go ahead and respond to your question. So um, unless there are any questions, seeing none, I'll go ahead and open up public comment. Uh, this is public comment for items on this special agenda only. And I'll ask, Highland, do we have any public members that would like to speak at this, this time? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this moment, I see no raised hands in the queue. All right, I'll close public comment, bring it back to the council. And we will start with the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee. Um, I'll go ahead and ask our city clerk to promote uh, Mr. John Martin, um, Ms. Courtney Shepler, Ms. Tina Werner, and Mr. Michael Woody um, to the panel. And I'll just look to see if they are with us. They're all there. Yes. All right. Um, can everybody hear me? John, can you yes. hear me okay? Yes. Courtney, can you hear me okay? Courtney, um, you're muted. Can you hear me okay? I sure can. Great. I was Thank just you. Switching, switching computers. I'll go on video as well. All right. And then, Tina, can you hear me okay? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I can. Thank you, ma'am. And then, Michael, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right, welcome to um, all of you, and we want to thank you on the part of the council for applying <coughs> to um, our important advisory boards. They mean um, very much to the city council. Um, they do um, all focused work um, as um, promulgated by the council through policy, and we appreciate that. Um, one of our most active, um, they're all very active, but the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee um, reviews all of our, uh, uh, much of our financial information. This is a four year term ending January 31st, 2026, and we have four current vacancies. 
And what I'll do is ask each of the applicants, I'll go ahead and call your name, if you'd give us uh, a one-minute overview of why you want to um, serve on the Citizens Finance Advisory Committee. Just about a minute would be great. And then I'll uh, ask each council member um, to ask one question, and I'll start with um, one of you, um, and then I'll try to rotate so that I'm not always starting with the same person, so that is it's as fair and equitable as possible. So that's our process there. We ask that you try to limit your answers to the questions um, to one minute uh, as possible because of the number of applicants that we have. If you go a little over, no harm, no foul. Um, we're not gonna punish you, we promise. And again, we wanna welcome you and just say relax. We're glad you're here. And we appreciate you applying um, to our advisory um, finance committee board. With that, I'll start, if I could, with uh, John Martin. Mr. Martin, could you introduce yourself, sir? Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and, and council members. Um, my name is John Martin. I am retired, residing in Morro Bay. Um, has spent the last four years volunteering on the CFAC and the last two years as the chair. And I think we've done a lot of good work and would like to continue that. Great, John, thank you very much. Um, Courtney, can you introduce yourself, please? And welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Courtney Shepler. I moved to Morro Bay in uh, 2020. Um, my daughter is a student at Cal Poly, so we had, um, you know, kind of fallen in love with the area. And then um, our uh, joy of the pandemic was being able to work remotely. And so we said, let's do something crazy and move down there. So we did. Mm -hmm. And happy to be here. And now that we're settled, um, ready to get involved in the community and, and give back, I um, have a finance background and audit, uh, accounting and finance, uh, currently work for Kaiser Permanente. I'm the CFO for Medicare and Medicaid nationally for Kaiser. So uh, used to working with big numbers and digging through thorny issues. So I'm hoping that my skill set can be a uh, value to the city. Great. Welcome. And thanks for applying. We appreciate it. Tina, welcome. And um, give us a little introduction. Thank you. Uh, I've only been here four years as of this month in Morro Bay, and I've served on the CFAC committee for two years. The The council elected me a midterm, so I I served half a term. I am new to city finance and government accounting in general, um, and I have a business and tech background. Um, and uh, you, that, you know, I'd love to continue. I've got a lot to learn. It's a big topic. And um, I like being tied in to what's happening in our community. So I look forward to uh, your questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tina. I appreciate that. And uh, then Michael, welcome. And if you'll introduce yourself, we'd appreciate it. Absolutely. My name is Michael Leonard Woody. I've been a professional civil engineer for over 20 years in California as a licensed contractor and as a professional engineer, uh, my, with my undergraduate work being in engineering, where I graduated from Fresno State with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, my master's, I'm a master's in public administration from Harvard University. Uh, professionally, in the past, I've served as a member of the Fresno City Council, a uh, community of just over half a million people with an annual budget of roughly $800 million. Um, over the years, I've worked quite a bit in public policy and out in front of the community. Today, I am also the owner of Struck One Engineering Construction in San Luis Obispo, where we focus on construction contracting with the U.S. Department of Defense, Fish and Wildlife, and the U.S. Air Force. My personal uh, relationship with Morro Bay is my family has a long, very colorful history here in San Luis Obispo, and specifically Morro Bay. And um, being that as it may, I take real pride in being an integral part of this region. I have been through the budget for the last fiscal year and familiarized myself with the problems going on with the city of Morro Bay, and I really look forward to answering a lot of your questions here today. Great, Michael. Thank you, and welcome as well. With that, I'll, um, I'll try to rotate council member um, questions as well. I do my best to keep track of who I call on, and so it's probably the hardest part of the meeting is to um, rotate this. And then again, I'll start with um, one of the panelists to answer first, and I'll try to rotate that each time with a different question. Council members, um, if you don't have a question, um, that's fine also. You can certainly pass, but I just wanted to, to let you know that um, either way, um, I'll go through the list and, and we'll go ahead and start. Uh, if we could start with you, uh, Courtney, if you don't mind me calling you Courtney, 
And I'll start with Council Member Addis first. Uh, do you have a question for the panelists? Thank you, Mayor, and uh, welcome to the CFAC uh, applicants. I was a member of CFAC, so I know what you're getting yourselves into. And uh, here's my question. When I was on CFAC, I really viewed my role as one of giving high-level input to help guide our city. Um, but I know that it's easy, given the amount of knowledge that you have, to kind of want to get into the weeds with staff. So I'm wondering how would you differentiate your role as a volunteer on CFAC, uh, even though you have a lot of knowledge, differentiate that role between yours and the role of the staff people. I think for me, it's, it's really understanding the role of the city staff. Um, I, I'm reflecting back, I was on the Measure A Oversight Committee for the city of Alameda or the Alameda um, School District. And it was a similar thing where we had the school district staff were supporting the work of the committee. And you really had to figure out, you know, kind of, all right, we're not going to peel back the layer further than this because this is really the job of the administration of the school district and we've got to trust them to do their work and what do we really need to know to do our work. Um, and occasionally you are going to have to peel back the layer on something just so you understand it or you understand the connection between um, various components, but um, I think it is important to understand that we have a, you know, a well-staffed city with, you know, competent professionals and we're not there to do their job for them or ask why this check was written or that check was written, but um, really how can we take a step back and look at the big picture of what's going on for the city and, um, you know, I, I also see our role as being, you know, helping to provide some additional um, public presence around what happens, you know, you see the things that start to circulate on social media and you know, the more of us that are out there that kind of understand what's happening, um, hopefully we can help, um, you know, with the with the story. Great. Thank you, Courtney. Um, Tina, can we go to you next, please? And if you need the question repeated, I'd be happy to have the council member repeat it. No, that's fine. Thank you. Great. Thank I, you. Hi, council. Um, so with my two years now under my belt, I mean, and also, obviously, the bylaws and all of the information. I, I mean, it's apparent that we are an advisory committee. And we do dig in more, I'll be frank, than I thought we would when I first was elected to this role. In terms of, to Courtney's point, there is a lot to understand. and um, But it is apparent to me, um, A, we have an amazing staff, in my opinion, and um, we, it is not necessary for us to, not only is it not a role, it's not necessary for us to play that role. Um, they give us excellent information um, and are available to us if we did need them for question and answer. And um, I feel that as I've been learning in these two years, uh, and it was all COVID, which was kind of a bummer, um, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of information and then the other people that have been on the committee, and their expertise uh, has been um, exemplary. And, and that line is clear to me that we are an advisory. Um, we make recommendations for the city council and we take in the information and do the best we can to frame that recommendation such that the council can take action if necessary. Thank you, Tina, I appreciate that. Uh, Michael, please. Okay, there we go with the mute button. Sorry about that, Mayor. No worries. Really, with something like this, I think it comes down to three very particular issues. One of which is that when you have um, any advisory type uh, committee, such as what we're doing here from the uh, community, part of our role is to instill a public confidence that sometimes can lack in any community across the United States today, especially with all the um, political fighting that's going on. The community needs to know that they do have a voice, not only through their elected officials, but through a public advisory committee that's overseeing a lot of what's going on. So that way we can help instill publicly 
a, uh, a confidence that's um, sometimes can be lacking in our community. The second idea would be to understand that government works best when we all understand our roles, that we fully understand that it's the elected officials that are truly the ones taking the word of the community and implementing that into public policy, where we have staff coming in and providing their professional recommendation over what needs to be done. And then you have an advisory group such as us going in there and saying, okay, here's what, um, here's would be our advice for what is going on here today. And oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and here's, and here's, as an advisory capacity, I'm terribly sorry about that. I love it. That's okay. <laughs> um, as I'm holding my dog back right now. <laughs> <laughs> As an advisory committee that we make sure that um, we create the best type of advice for the council and for the staff and making sure that we all work hand in hand. And that becomes a third idea in this is um, understanding that we're all a team working together for one thing, and that's the betterment of Moral Bay. And we're all here today because all of us truly do care about this community. And that's what it's really all about. As long as we understand that, I think we'll all do a really good job. Great. Thank you, Michael. Um, John, please. Okay, yeah, I have a little bit of different view of it, and I may be mistaken. And but the, the question says that um, CFAC is supposed to do just high level review and not get into the details. And I'm, I'm, other than the WARF review, I'm not sure where that actually says that in the bylaws. I know that the, the quality of WARF review, actually, we were told we just want a high level review. But, the way I looked at the CFAC um, is that it's more akin to the Planning Commission, um, where you have assembled a team of subject, subject matter experts, and they actually do ask some of the more detailed, hard questions that perhaps the City Council doesn't have the time or the expertise to, to do. And so that we would operate and function more like a, a Planning Commission, and then things go from us with recommendations to the city council. Now, I, like I said, if, I, if I'm wrong about that, then, then that's fine. But we, we have done quite a bit of uh, hard questioning of the staff. And I, I do agree that you have a, a very professional and capable staff. You're a little bit short staffed right now, as you know, uh, during this transition period. Um, and we've always, the folks on the CFAC have always told the staff that you know, we'd be happy to do things like proofreading reports or things like that before they went to the city council. Um, but uh, anyway, that's that's my take on it. Thank you, John. I appreciate that very much. So we'll go to uh, our sec second council member, council member Barton. Um, your question, and if we could start with you, Tina, this time, please, I'd appreciate it. Council member Barton. Okay, hang on a second here. I'm flipping, flipping my pages here. <laughs> Getting to here we go. Um, well, first, I'd like to say thank you, Tina, for um, stepping in and serving two years already. Um, that that's a valuable valuable time, and I'm glad to hear how much you feel like you've been learning. Um, so, I'm I'm looking at your background here, and I'm wondering what did you retire from? I'm sorry, did it. I'm going to say in the current application, um, I am an ex-program um, manager, most recently from Hewlett-Packard. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Silicon Valley, um, IT, uh, project management. I've, I've actually, I'm, I'm retired now almost four years, so I'm kind of dated for, for most people, but I... Um, I owned my own technology staffing company for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for Oracle, Intel, Advanced Micro Devices. Names people don't don't make the front lines anymore with Google and LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. But at the time, they were considered pretty worthy. Um, and so my uh, my background is kind of eclectic in that sense. But you know, business owner and um, project management, uh, sales. Um, and uh, and specifically around IT and applications. Um, so to try to sum it up, yeah. Wow, that's yeah, private private industry, right? Not any government role whatsoever. Yeah. That's why it was such it's such a learning for me. Right, right, yeah. and why it's been so valuable to have you to have a different perspective. Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, I I mean, I appreciate that, and I am trying to adapt to how to even communicate. 
because it's different, right? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I could just clarify, Councilor Martin. I guess that was a clarifying question on her resume. Do you have one yeah. general question that um, each of the panelists could answer that um, so we could be um, fair with across across the board? Thanks. Right. And, um, 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 where do you see the the uh, the committee in the next two years? Okay, that's really a great question because, um, you know, there's some fascinating things that are in front of us as a community, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to stay with CFAC, even though I don't know that CFAC will have any kind of role um, with the issue around our stacks, the wind offshore, um, the potential of battery. I mean, there's a lot that's in our future. And um, two years is kind of the horizon when maybe they will, we will be active or see activity around decision making as a city and as citizens of the community. And um, even though the wharf project was unusual in, in a sense to give to us as a committee based on why we were created, and that is a very detailed and complicated project. And though I don't have knowledge of building that kind of facility, um, I have found that it is particularly interesting to be um, involved in that kind of a discussion or see those kind of presentations. And I don't know if we will have the bandwidth or as a committee, because we fill up our agendas, um, but I do think there could be the possibility that there is a future project like the Wharf Project, among some of the things I mentioned, that um, may end up as you know, CFAC may have some sort of advisory role, and I would like that. Other than that, I mean, Q and E is an important place for us to be, and um, and if that's where we stay for the next two years, I'm fine with that. But uh, I'm, uh, you know, I mean, being involved in CFAC makes you pay attention to things, whether it's on your agenda or in your bylaws or not, and so I appreciate that. You know, yeah. I, I hope that answered your question. It did very well. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Michael, please. Eventually, I'll start hitting that mute button correctly. <laughs> um, if I understand the uh, question correctly, is where do I see CFAC being within the next couple of years, or maybe our role within the next few years? Um, if I understand it correctly, council member. Um, the, the biggest issue that I see that's been going on, where I see where we could be in the best advisory capacity for all of you, is to help give direction on bringing back the health of our local economy due to the, obviously the pandemic that's been going on for the last couple of years. It's been devastating to everybody, especially out here in the private sector. Um, a lot of government agencies have been obviously feeling the effects. Obviously, uh, the city of Moral Bay is no different. The general fund, emergency fund, I believe it is, is coming along very, very well. All of you have done an amazing job bringing back the health of the local government economy to a level that I didn't think you guys would get back to for at least another two or three years. So that's been stunning. But I think it's to also help get some guidance and some advice on where we still need to go and be able to get into the budget and to look at how it's directly affecting uh, the lives of everybody here in Moral Bay and what we can do to help tweak you or guide you and, and advise you on what can be done in order to help out people in this community. So I would say in a priority sense, that would be a priority for definitely uh, the next couple of years in the direction that I think that this advisory committee of many that we should be going down. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, John, please. Well, as, as Tina mentioned, um, the quarterly work reviews, that takes up a lot of our time these days, and I think that's going to be still going for the next couple of years. The measure Q&E, of course, that's part of what we do by law. And um, and then I think, but the overwhelming thing is whatever, whatever the council wants to assign to the committee to further its goal of fiscal sustainability, and uh, we'll take a look at anything that fits within that category. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. And then um, if we go to Courtney, please. Uh, 
newcomer to the committee. I don't have uh, any preconceived notions of where I think it should be in two years. So I'm really coming in expecting to have the opportunity to meet folks and learn. And I imagine ask me the same question six months from now and I may have a stronger opinion. So I'll just be learning. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we'll go to council member Heller. And um, this time, if we could start with um, you, Michael. So, Councilmember Heller, welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor, and thank all four of you for applying. Uh, CPAC is one of the most important advisory committees, and uh, I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for stepping up and making this commitment. It's very helpful to staff and to council. The question I'd like to ask is, at the end of your experience of having been on this committee, it, it to how would you how would you describe it uh, if it went really well for you what what how would you describe the experience uh, um if i could just actually repeat that the, your video cut out and all i heard oh, was sorry. Five years I, mean, I mean my brother-in-law's dead so <laughs> really cool. oh, i'm sorry about that so <laughs> a nice desk by the way also it is nice isn't it yeah i kind of like it so <laughs> So this is uh, kind of an open-ended question, but at the end of your two years or your four years on this advisory committee, how would you like to describe your experience? Uh, well, starting with me, I, I think like anybody in this community, um, uh, hopefully when this is done, and hopefully um, you know if this does work out here today, I'd be honored if it did. Um, an experience like any other community experience where you felt like that you did your part in order to move a community forward and to make um, you're not just your voice heard or my voice heard, but the voice of so many other people that are in this community. Uh, it, it's being able to, like with anything in life, look back and say, did I make a difference? Did I, was I a part of something that truly moved a community forward and moved this area forward? So I would say, you know, in a very simplistic term, that would be the best part of all of this is um, knowing that you can do that. And I would hopefully that I can look back and I'm sure I will and be able to say that, yeah, we helped move things forward in this community and made a positive impact on uh, the city of Morro Bay and people here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, John, can we go to you next, please? Okay. Um, well, I think a couple of things. Um, First of all, I don't think the CFAC really has the role of, of giving our individual opinions about policies for the city. That really is for the city council to do. You know, our role really is focused on finance and the execution of that finance, the reporting of that finance, what kind of information is getting to the city council, what kind of information is going out to the public, make sure that stuff is accurate and complete and that, um, all the options, all the, the viable options have been looked at. Um, so, yeah, we're a citizens committee, but we're not just bringing our personal opinions and, and recommending to the city council what we think the council should do based on our opinions. So it's, I think it's much more technical. And so from, from my perspective, I think one of the biggest things we can consider accomplishments when we look back is was the information that came out of CFAC and went to the council and to the public, was that information accurate, complete, and comprehensive? And if we can do that, I think we've accomplished our goal. Thank you, John, appreciate that. And um, then uh, Courtney, please. Well, I would hope at the end of four years that um, after being through the learning curve um, that we as a committee or me as an individual has had the opportunity to provide, um, you know, either um, fresh ideas for a, for a topic or a risk area that's emerging, um, the streamlining, um, potentially the way that information is shared with the public or presented to the public in a way that makes it more digestible. I think that's always important if uh, people can really understand um, the situation. Um, or the circumstances of a, of, of a situation. Um, that's something that, you know, I've always uh, prided myself on is being able to communicate uh, complicated things in a way that uh, people can understand. So if I'm able to help with that, then I hope it'll help the community as a whole. Great, thank you. And Tina, please. Well, all of the um, applicants all have elements of how I feel. So at the end of 
of four more years. Um, from my perspective, first of all, I will really, I believe, really understand the, uh, the, the financial responsibility of managing the city of Morro Bay better than I do or did when I started and as I continue to grow. Um, but I guess what I would take away for myself as important, uh, to John's point, you know, being a solid uh, uh, um, participant in the process of recommendation and communication around um, these financial issues, um, but also personally, um, I think it's really important that we as citizens actually understand how our city works. And that I'm actually, the reason I started this to begin with is I wanted to become a more valuable citizen. Um, you know, I wanted to make better decisions as a citizen and um, not just um, based on my opinion. I wanted to have experience. So um, for me, the reward would be feeling like I achieved my objective, that I served, that I served well, that I learned, and that I um, am a better, frankly, citizen, as maybe altruistic as that sounds, but that's what I was going for. Fantastic, thank you so much. And I think that uh, takes care of Council Member Heller's question, and we'll move to Council Member Ford. And if we could start with you, John, um, please, and Council Member Ford. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all of the applicants here and those who have served already over in the past on CFAC. I really value all the work you've put into this uh, board and um, just very much appreciate it. And I appreciate the fact that the other two of you are willing to put in the work as well. Um, my question is really regarding um, preparation for upcoming meetings when you receive you know, a packet um, of information for your upcoming agenda. Uh, I would just like for you to sort of just give me an idea of how you manage your time and what is the preparation that you either currently are doing or plan to do leading up to that meeting. Um, for example, really quick, you know, um, are you a person who reads it as quickly as possible and um, gathers questions and puts those questions towards staff before the meeting or do you save them all up for the meeting? You know, that sort of thing. So um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Hey, John, please. Uh, thank you, Jen. Um, yeah, I, I read I read it all and uh, formulate questions and send them as soon as I can. Um, typically, the questions I'll, I'll submit on Monday. Meetings are on Tuesday. Uh, and it used to be that staff was able to actually answer our questions in writing. But now, because of the recent Brown Act interpretation, uh, that hasn't been able to be done. So um, the questions we submit and then they get answered at the meeting, uh, which makes the meetings a little bit a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm not sure if that wrinkle can be worked out or not. It was really helpful when we were able to get written questions back, especially on on numbers questions. Um, those those kind of things are often difficult to to really hash out uh, orally at the meeting. Um, but that's what we what we've been dealing with. So, thank you, John. And if we could go to uh, Courtney, please. Sure. Uh, so, being a newbie, I don't know how far in advance we'll get the materials. But as long as there is a, a weekend in advance of the meeting, then I would appreciate that time to review it. Um, I do um, review materials in detail. Uh, certainly, I'm happy to send uh, staff any questions that I might have. It sounds like they may have to address them during the meeting instead of in writing in advance. But yeah, I you know always like to give people time because some questions are you know take a little bit of research to answer. Um, so you know I always think it's best to give people time to prepare for answers as opposed to you know I got gotcha you in the moment and you know I've got you on your heels because you know now you don't know how to respond. So that's definitely not my style. Um, so yeah, look forward to having enough time to review it. I'm on a on the board of an HOA right now, and unfortunately, our management company um, 
uh, in the last year has done a really good job of getting us our packets about an hour and a half in advance of our meetings. And I'm in the middle of my work day. And so that hasn't gone very well. So as long as our process works better than that, I should be good to go. <laughs> uh, ours does work better than that, fortunately. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, Tina, please. Um, okay, so what gets submitted is frequently voluminous. It is not a trivial undertaking on some meetings, and honestly, it can be overwhelming. I mean, going through a WARF report, uh, I can't, uh, oftentimes I can see certain things in that report that I might have a question about, but I am not able to dissect that in the time allowed or with my background. And to be honest with you, on some level, I rely on all my the other responsible bodies for that particular project as an example to have done their homework. And um, so that I kind of feel that my oversight of that is a nice to have but not critical. So I find the WARF report to be um, an understanding um, uh, challenging. And then there's also all the budget um, information and all kinds of things that come to us that when you talk about detailed review, if you have a financial background, you might literally get into every single page and do detailed review. But my focus has been to understand Q&E and, um, you know, things that if you look at the agenda, the agenda will make a recommendation of what um, staff is asking. And so that I can keep my, um, because I'm learning, and so that I can keep myself somehow focused um, and not get lost in the detail. So I think it's actually a struggle. I think it is an excellent question, by the way, um, because in, for me, I, I find it to be a struggle to get through all of this information. And um, honestly, I rely on people like John and other people, and I'm grateful that they have the background that they do because they can ask a more discerning question than I can at this point. And that helps me understand the nature of what's being discussed much better than maybe when I came into it. Not all the time, but some of the time. So um, while it's good to have someone like myself who might be new to this arena, and I am grateful that I am serving and I would like to continue to serve, I would never make up the committee of people like me. You want people who also have a background like someone like John does or even Courtney and um, uh, you know other people that have served on the committee. They've got strong financial backgrounds, and it's helpful. And whether they're applying private industry or public, they um, they look at the problem differently um, sometimes. Don't know if that answers your question, but I hope it does. It does. Thanks, Tina. Thank you, Tina. And uh, Michael, please. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's probably one of the most important questions that's ever been that's been asked on this today is how do we uh, bide our time to get through something like this? One of the lessons that I've learned from working in government in the past and being an elected official and dealing directly with these types of budgets and committees um, is that government is like trying to drink a glass of water out of a fire hydrant. It's amazing how much information comes at you all at the same time, and you have no idea of this until you get into the middle of it and you think, holy cow, this is absolutely amazing how much information is going on. In the past, when I dealt with this, when we would do our yearly budgets in the city of Fresno, it was um, basically just sitting down and saying, okay, let's make a very methodical way of how I'm going to go through this. Now, I've been able to use that same ability that I've learned in the past of sitting on these county boards and city boards and retirement boards and everything else and create that same and use that same organizational structure in what I do professionally as well as an engineer and as a contractor for the federal government. So the idea of saying, okay, let's go into this meeting and I realize that I'm going to be getting a stack of paperwork that's going to be rather intimidating at first if you've never seen it. Um, I've seen that before, and I've learned very quickly, here's my game plan. I go through it like anything, I take it, I carefully go through all the sections, understand what I'm reading, read every page of it, create the type of questions that have to be done, and especially with the Brown Act, uh, you got to make sure it's done correctly, and then just methodically go through it one by one, like everything else I've had to do in my life. But like I said, I think what helps me in this application with this is that this is something that I have a real good background with, so I pretty much know what I'm getting myself into when it comes to municipal budgets. Great. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it very much. 
Okay, my turn. And um, this time, if we could start with uh, Courtney. Um, and this question is for all of you, of course. Um, the city council obviously um, has the responsibility of um, setting policy for the city. And the Citizen uh, uh, Finance Advisory Committee um, receives basically a work plan from the city council on an annual basis. Um, besides the measure Q and E um, responsibilities that are set by law. Uh, my question to you is, um, and I realize we have some tenured versus non-tenured individuals that have not been on the committee, but I assume also that all of you have some sense of city finances and what the financial condition of the city is. The, the question is, um, what perhaps two or three work assignments would you hope to receive from the city council if you were um, um, appointed to this position? And we'll start again with Courtney, please. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Um, you said what work assignments would you yeah, like to so receive? Yeah, so the city council sets policy on an, on an annual basis with regard to various city policies. We have uh, a number of city goals that guide basically our work for the year. And um, from what you have perhaps reviewed or seen um, with regard to this committee, um, I guess my real question is, um, what would you like to see assigned to you from the city council? Or maybe another way of asking it is, what do you consider to be um, financially um, the most important two or three items that you think the committee should review? Let's see. Um, it, helps. <laughs> it, it helped a little bit, but I, I do think I'm still coming in, you know, just with not quite enough information to be able to answer that robustly. Um, but, you know, any, you know, the, you mentioned the, the measures on top of that, you know, there's special projects. If there are certain, you know, initiatives around cost savings or HR or benefits, those are areas I've had a lot of experience in personally. Um, dealing with, you know, extremely complex HR and benefits um, items for uh, for a very large organization. Um, so personally, I'd be happy to dive in on a special project like that. I, I wasn't sure if the question was for me as an individual or for the committee as a whole. Oh, you're muted now. <laughs> There's no wrong answer, by the way. It's for both. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, let me go to Tina. Well, you know, um, <laughs> ideally, I would like to see our city um, make more money <laughs> and uh, be more financially viable. And I don't know what, I mean, as in ignorance, I don't know what the potential revenue opportunity exists in any agreement that we might make with Vistra, for example, or anything along wind and um, energy type decisions that are good for the state, good for the country, good for the world, um, how in fact, um, I, I would like to know how in fact they do positively impact us as a city. Uh, or could impact us, and what kind of financial opportunities are there for us. Um, and so I am interested in those things because um, they're big, and I believe they're coming. And uh, and then, you know, there's some things that are going on or that I'm, you know, that we're aware of, like um, the parking fees. I'm, I'm not totally sure how I feel about that. I mean, as a, I haven't really looked at it entirely. Um, I, under, I understand, and this dovetails into the harbor. Um, I almost considered throwing my hat in the ring for a, a position at the harbor committee because I felt like that's the next huge thing to really understand about our city. And I don't know if there's an opportunity because I haven't played any role there for CFAC to help or review or consider whatever however the harbor functions financially and 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 if there's any opportunity but because it's so important to us um it's important to me those are my things great thank you tina uh, michael please 
Uh, yeah, thank you for the question on that. Um, you know, being that I haven't sat on this, obviously I haven't sat on this advisory committee before, but, you know, I have a bit of a background in something like this. As far as, you know, and as you pointed out, it's the mayor and the council that sets the policy, but I would say that, you know, if you were sending out assignments, I would like to think in terms of maybe a couple of items, um, such as, you know, I, I realize that, for example, the general fund emergency fund is, um, is coming back very strong, very well. I don't know the exact number where it's at this point, but I would say definitely that would be one of the items that would be of utmost important for the people of this community as well. It's uh, very clear from your last budget that you know, um, you know you're well below your California GAN limit that was adopted what the late seventies, I think 78, 79. So you know we've got that level under control. The next one would be you know strategies in terms of what does it take to make sure that we don't have to take the same type of staffing cuts that you guys had to do within the last few years and what strategies that we can use in order to keep staffing up. Um, you have a staff of roughly 100 FTEs right now. And obviously, you know, maybe there's a way to make sure that we uh, give those folks the ability to not only have security in their jobs, but to make sure that you don't have to make those staffing cuts so we can uh, serve the community better. And then, of course, you know, how directly the, the city of Morro Bay uh, works directly with this community and specifically such as business owners and the private homeowners out here. What we can do, uh, you know, any type of advice that we can give to you in terms of uh, what can be done in order to interface correctly with those businesses and to make life just a little bit easier for everybody out there. Um, I, I think most people have a tremendously fond view of our local community government here. But, you know, like with any government agency, it's a matter of you know, the rules are the rules. They are set through the state and a lot of times through the federal government. And sometimes getting through those, through those rules as easily as possible can be a big task on hand. So I would say those those would be really the three that I would I would say would be interesting assignments from you folks as a um, as a legislative body for this community. Great. Thank you, Michael. And last but not least, John, please. Uh, well, the, the list that's in our bylaws is pretty good. You know, the routine stuff, the quarterly budget performance reports, the investment reports, the 10-year forecast, uh, those kind of things. Uh, but I think the most important one, without a doubt, is the annual financial report, um, because that really becomes the city's permanent record. You know, when you were a kid in school, you always worried about things on your permanent record, and that is the one. Uh, that's the document that all the credit agencies are going to look at, and anybody who really wants to learn about the city is going to look at that document. So that document has to be completely accurate and uh, and and well stated and conforming to the the uh, GASB rules. And that's something the city really should be very proud of because several years running now, the city has received that award for excellence in financial reporting from the GFOA. That's a major accomplishment, and that's something that has only been done uh, since you all have been on the, the council. So that's something that you should be proud of. Um, the only other thing I can think of is that um, with the completion of the wharf project, there's going to be a lot of discussion and analysis in regards to how the um, the money that was received through the through the two financings gets integrated with the money that was raised. By, uh, by the rate increases and money on hand and also the one water project uh, work, which is pretty large scale. And, and how does all that get done? And what's the best way to proceed and how to address other potential city liabilities that may not directly pertain to the enterprise funds? I think that's gonna be a big sub subject that the CFAC can help out with. Great, John. Thank you so much. And again, um, our thanks as a council to each and every one of you. Thank you for enduring um, our questions. And um, so we've got a great group of people, some great answers. Um, and we'll go ahead. And um, what I'm going to do is, um, as we've done before, um, since we're not live and we're, we are via Zoom, I'm going to um, entertain a motion. You can, you can make a motion for um, any number of individuals that have applied. Again, we have four individuals for four positions and, uh, and or um, uh, whatever your pleasure may well be. And 
So I would, at this point in time, go ahead and entertain a motion for um, the CFAC Advisory Board applicant um, um, approval. Well, Mayor, I'll, I'll make the motion. Certainly. Councilmember Heller. Uh, I move that we approve John Martin, Courtney Shepler, Dean Wiener, and Michael Woody to the CFAC. Okay, motion by Councilmember Heller. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion by Councilmember Heller to approve um, uh, the applicants. Uh, second by Councilmember Martin. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Addis? Yes. Councilmember Ford? Yes. Councilmember Heller? Yes. Councilmember Barton? Yes. And Mayor Heading? Yes. Congratulations, you've been appointed to a four-year term on the CFAC. Thank you very much. Well, get ready to roll up your sleeve, folks. Um, there's mm -hmm. plenty to do, and we are uh, excited to have not only the continuing members, but the two new members added to our CFAC Advisory Board. Welcome. And again, thank you for being part of um, our city and stepping forward to get involved with um, um, this important committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, we'll go ahead and, um, sorry to use the term, we're going to demote you folks <laughs> and bring up um, our, uh, first of all, um, council, we're going to do the Harbor Advisory Board, um, and we have the uh, South Bay Los Osos representative for a four-year term ending January 31st. 2026 the right page in my packet and for that we do have two applicants uh jean um, dowdy and raymond purcell and i'll go ahead and let uh dana promote them it looks like they're here welcome and we will use the same process as before um, we will um, go ahead and uh, ask each of you, if you wouldn't mind, to give us just a, a one-minute um, overview of why you're interested in applying to our Harbor Advisory Board. And then um, um, after those introductions, each council member will be asking a question, and I'll just rotate who goes first. Again, on the part of the council, both to you, Raymond, and Jean, thank you so much for applying. Very important, one of our very important advisory boards. Mm -hmm. Thank you for stepping up and... Um, um, being part of the community and applying for this position. So with that, Jean, why don't you start us off and give us a little introduction, please. Good afternoon, council members, mayor. Um, my name is Jean Dowdy. Um, I've been uh, on the Harbor Advisory Board for 35, 37 years. Uh, I live in Crested by the Sea area. Um, I, uh, I own a company called Land Sea Interface, which is located down on the old Beacon Fuel Dock. Um, I'm an architect and engineering contractor, and I maintain all the bay, most of the moorings in Morro Bay. Uh, I usually are on the water three to five days a week, um, but almost every day I'm in Morro Bay. I consider it almost my home. So I'm looking forward to the next four years. I think we have some exciting projects on the way. So that's about it. Great. Thank you, Jane. Appreciate that. Um, Raymond? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Heading, council persons. Uh, my name is Ray Purcell. I am a nurse practitioner by training. My original academic uh, career began at Humboldt State University in resource management. Uh, I have some experience seasonally, uh, primarily in recreation and some resource management with Forest Service, Department of Interior. Um, ultimately went back to school to become a registered nurse and did that at Cal State Bakersfield, raised family in Bakersfield, ultimately uh, saw an opportunity to relocate to San Luis Obispo County and seized that. We've lived here now for about three years. My familiarity with Morro Bay began about six to seven years ago with the inception of the Sea Life Stewards Program, which is a docent program, volunteers through California State Parks in Morro Bay. And that really just served to wet my whistle for the diversity of the natural beauty and resource of the harbor and recognizing uh, becoming a community member 
hear that there are a number of constituencies that are involved with uh, the harbor as a whole and that as a resource. Um, other experience that I bring to this um, is beyond church committees and, and church family is that I spent some time as a faculty member at California Community College, Bakersfield College, as nursing faculty. And of course, there are committee assignments and responsibilities there and familiarity with, com with committee operation. And uh, given that campuses, particularly uh, Bakersfield College, with about 65,000 students enrolled, is its own community with its own constituency. Um, I have spent several years as the director of student health for that same institution. And there uh, was a participant on a college administrative council, how that uh, compares and contrasts to uh, faculty is that they are the non-faculty positions of the, of the operation administration of the community college. In the community, I was a member of the uh, implementation of tobacco settlement money in the uh, current tobacco coalition. We worked uh, as uh, an advisory to the, administra the administrator of those funds, which was Kern County Public Health Department. Uh, there I became familiar with the strategic planning process and, uh, and community outreach uh, among the various um, citizen representatives. And then finally, forming a campus health advisory, as I sta stated earlier, campus is made up of far more than just the student body, but representing the student body as large as it was. Uh, began with strategic planning and ultimately uh, listening to the various campus, re campus and community representatives. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate that very much. Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin our questions again. Uh, appreciate both of you being here. We ask that you um, try to limit your responses to about a minute. We won't hold you to uh, to the to the bell being rung, but. Um, uh, we want to make sure we get through each council member. So we'll more or less reverse the order. I'll start with council member Ford. And Ray, if you could answer the question first, please. Thank you, council member Ford. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you to both of you who are applying today. And, um, you know, we really appreciate uh, you offering to to provide this service for our city and also Jean for your 35 to 30 I think you said possibly 37 years of service as well um, on this board uh, my question uh, is actually the same question that I just asked our applicants for CFAC um, my question is regarding your preparation going into you know, let's say the upcoming meeting um, you know, what is your process for time management when it comes to preparing for, uh, you know, when you receive your packet, are you, um, are you a, the type of person to ask questions ahead of time to staff, if you have any, or are you more of a, you know, I'd rather ask it in the, in, in the meeting itself. Just kind of give me an idea of, of what that might look like. And Jean, of course, I, I would say it's, what have you been doing? And Raymond, what do you see yourself doing for this board? <laughs> you, you, you tagged on a few, um, additions that that are very broad uh, how I prepare how do I organize my work um, I am the kind of, of planner who uh, appreciates having the time to consider the the aspects the perspectives of uh, individual issues and the work before me. I like to organize those questions. I like to bring them together uh, for myself first. Um, I like to consider the bigger picture of, of the uh, agenda at large and for a particular meeting so that I'm prepared going into that meeting. Uh, I'm also a, a believer in chain of command, 
and uh, mindful of how precious city resources and time are. And so what I would anticipate doing if I needed uh, clarification uh, or questions uh, answered in advance would be to become familiar with the advisory panelists, my colleagues there, and the leadership, the chair and vice chair of the advisory prior to utilizing any other resources. Um, I think that you, you also ask some valuable questions just toward, toward the end of your statement. Um, and if I recall what that is, just uh, clarify me if I'm off, is that your, uh, your question was, what do I hope to achieve? Uh, principally, uh, I see the advisory, um, I see advisory in general as um, an endeavor to collect data, deliver data, possibly to interpret data, uh, but also to possibly suggest policy where that's uh, appropriate. Um, also, I see this as a matter of citizenship and participation in a committee uh, in, a, in, a, in the community in a way that I had not uh, in the past been able to do. So this is an opportunity for personal growth and citizenship growth. Um, but also to be a representative of the constituents of the resource. Uh, did that answer your question? Was I on target? Okay. I apologize for making that not so clear. So yeah, it really, my question was, you know, how do you prepare ahead of a meeting? Um, ah. You know, what does that look like? And I apologize if I went a little <laughs> around, around the question there, but you did answer that. So thank you for doing that. Just, just keep me, keep me on task. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Jean, please. Uh, Councilman, Councilwoman Jen, um, normally we receive our packets issued on Friday, so I like to look at them over the weekend. Um, our meetings are normally on Thursday, so that gives me a full week to look at them. Um, after I look at the, the, the staff report, I will normally talk to people on the water um, discuss it with people as I walk in the South Bay area there um, and try to get a general feeling how how the people I deal with on a working day, daily day basis feel about this particular item. Um, but when it comes to the council, uh, excuse me, the Harbor Advisory Group meeting, I'm open to to change my mind. Um, quite often I, I will go with, with what uh, somebody will bring up a point where I hadn't thought about. So um, I like to bring a practical knowledge to, to what I see, and that's how we look at it. That's it. Thank you, Gene. Appreciate it. Councilmember Heller, please. And this time, we'll start with you, Gene. OK. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. So my question is, there's a lot going on in the harbor. Can you tell me what you think the greatest challenge uh, relative to the harbor that's facing the city at this time? Well, basically, the, the capital improvements that need to be done um, there's a lot of deferred maintenance um, over the past years. Um, docks and wharf, the Beach Street docks need to be repaired. Um, some of the revetments need to be worked at. Uh, currently, we are pursuing some grants to do some revetment repair work, which is all good. Um, money is always going to be an issue. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge is how we're going to handle the next 10 years or next 15 years with the wind farm or the battery storage um, and whether we become an industrial harbor or not. Um, and I believe that Morro Bay should be for the Morro Bayans, not just for the tourists. So those are my concerns. Thank you, Gene. Ray? <laughs> I am um, untried, untested somewhat. Um, I've, I've tried to uh, frame in the experience that I do bring and the diversity and perspective. I think the vibrancy of the harbor resource going forward um, can be a prudent balance which uh, strives 
to uh, represent the, the, the various interests. Um, I'm applying particularly to be a represent representative of the constituents of South Bay, so Morro Bay sphere of influence. Uh, and so I keep that priority uh, in mind as I would integrate with the other representative of leaseholders, recreationists, uh, visitors, and people who make their, their living on and out of the bay. Great. Thank you, Ray. And Ray, we'll start with you on this question. And Council Member Barton, you're up, please. Thank you. Well, thank you both for your um, answers um, in great detail. Um, I would agree that the, the next few years are big ones for um, capital projects and repairs and uh, such. Um, and as a result, I don't have any more questions. So, Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. I'll go to Council Member Addis, please. And again, Ray, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mayor, and I want to say thank you, Jean, for your service, and thank you, Ray, for applying. I'm the liaison to have, and um, I've really enjoyed getting to know the folks that are on HAB and the perspective, and um, my question is similar to one that I asked a previous committee, which is that I view the um, purpose of people on these committees to give some high-level input on the work plan of council. Um, oftentimes, people come to the committee with lots and lots of experience and want to give detailed information or detailed feedback to staff. I'm wondering what you view as the difference between your role as a HAB member and the role of staff uh, in terms of coordinating and facilitating HAB and working for the city? Um, delineation of responsibility is important. And it's, I'm mindful that advisories um, support and serve at the uh, convenience of, of the mayor and of the council, and that we are asked to uh, provide information and that that have uh, that it be specific, that it be reliable, accurate, timely, um, to interpret that data as regards our constituents and only suggest policy. So provide the product that we're asked to deliver. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. Gene, please. Yes. Um Don, um, I think that the Harvard Advisory Board job is to advise the city council. And in doing that, we work hand in hand with staff. Um, they'll make their staff report based on whatever um, they were charged with to you, either by the council or issues that come up. They'll write their report. Um, we will review it. Um, sometimes we'll talk among ourselves during the meetings. Um, other times we'll go out and talk to the working waterfront or concerned citizens on that particular issue. Um, and quite often we will talk to staff or Eric and, um, and say, well, what do you mean by this? Or, or what, should we, what do you think we should do on this particular item here? Um, and then we bring it back and then we'll have our discussion. And I think we work on a hand-to-hand -hand basis with the staff coming up with a advice to the council. And that's about it. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate that very much. And um, I too will um, forego my question. I it's been answered in, in, in your both of your um, responses. So I appreciate the comprehensive information that you've given to us as a council for consideration. Unfortunately, we don't have two positions because we have two great applicants and 
So, um, but we are forced to make a decision and we're only able to appoint one. But again, on the, on the behalf of the council, I wanna thank you both for stepping up. Um, Jean, also for your service in the past, uh, but also for both of you uh, stepping up to want to um, um, just give of your time on this important advisory board. So with that, we'll go ahead and move to a motion. Um, look for a motion or entertain a motion from a council member. Councilmember Addis, I see your hand. I'm going to uh, move to appoint Jean Doty, but I, well, let me see if I get a second and then can I say some more words? Motion by Councilmember Addis to approve Jean Doty. Um, I'll second. Second by uh, Councilmember Ford. Thank you. We do have uh, a motion and a second, and um, I'll go ahead and entertain any further discussion. I, I just want to make a plea to Ray um, to please apply for Rec and Park because as I was listening to your background, it just feels perfect. Um, your background in nursing. I went to Humboldt State, by the way, and my mom is a nurse. Um, and I, I just don't want to lose you. And I did this when we had to make another difficult decision for a different commission uh, where there just weren't enough open spaces. And I made the plea uh, for a different person who then applied for HAB and is now you know a wonderful contributing member so i just want to publicly ask you to please apply for park and rec i don't know if it's legal for me to just make a motion to appoint you uh, at this meeting my guess is it isn't but i want to put that not. out there Sorry about that. i know so I, I do want to put that out there seriously i just think your background with serving the community obviously been, being a giving person thinking about the health of the community and, and how that weaves in is just melds really well with Rec and Park. And then I want to say thank you to Jean for so many, many years of service, service and um, I really would love to see you continue. You've been a mainstay on HAB, and so that's you know why I made the motion the way that I did. I'll just say here, here, Council Member Addis, thank you for that eloquent um, um, analysis and review of our candidates and thank you for recognizing Ray. Ray, I agree. I I would so love to have you on one of our advisory boards and please don't be discouraged if uh, the vote doesn't go your way this time. And Jean, again, thank you for your service um, in the past and we, we appreciate you greatly. Um, any other discussion? No, I was just going to say I second again what <laughs> council member Addis said. So, um, yes, uh, Ray, I, I really, truly appreciate you coming today. And, um, you know, again, you know, as I said before, if it doesn't go your way, it's I, I am here to kind of sort of beg you to please uh, <laughs> follow the advice that um, Council Member Addis um, put forth because I truly see the value in your service and I would be so excited to have you on one of our boards. So, Thank you, Council Member Ford. Okay, any other comments? If not, um, I will go ahead and ask for a roll call vote, please. Council Member Addis? Yes. Council Member Ford? Yes. Council Member Heller? Yes. Council Member Barton? Yes. And Mayor Hetty? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Great. Thank you again, Ray, for being here. Jean, welcome back again. And thank Hi. you thank for you. your continued service. Can I say something? Yes, sir. I, I, I've been so pleased to work on the Harbor Advisory Board for the last 35, 37 years. I'm looking forward to another four years. It's been my pleasure to work with you guys. Great. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to demote you, unfortunately, at this time and uh, bring in um, uh, Mr. Sean Green. Uh, this is for council. This is the Harbor Advisory Board member at large representative. We have one vacancy for a four year term. Um, ending January 31st, 2026. And with that, I will welcome Sean. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Um, I think you know the drill. You've been through this before, but basically we'll ask if um, you'd give us like a one-minute introduction as to why you want to serve on the Harbor Advisory Board, and then we'll go through um, uh, council member questions 
one question per council member uh, for you, and then we'll move to for a motion. So again, welcome, Sean. Really appreciate you stepping up and um, applying for this position. And we've appreciated your involvement in the city in so many different areas in the past. And thank you for that as well. So welcome, Sean. Sure. Um, thanks, Council. Um, why am I interested in, in the Harbor Board? Well, I, I, I tend to think that this is the one area of, of the city that's been relatively overlooked for a long time. And I feel like city leadership may be on board uh, that, to, you know, uh, regarding the idea that Harbor's next in line for um, some major improvements, both both systemically, structurally, uh, all of the above. Um, I have some experience uh, as part of the uh, Tourism Advisory Board. Um, I have some experience, a lot of active experience working with the Planning Commission, uh, including a number of subcommittees, uh, one of which is the uh, Public Benefits Subcommittee, and then uh, active in the uh, uh, design work that they're working on right now. Um, I'm a daily user of the waterfront. Uh, just to piggyback on something that uh, that Gene just mentioned, uh, that the waterfront is not just for tourists; it's for people in uh, that's that it's for Moro Bayans. But I want to make a, a, a distinction that it's not just for Moro Bayans with boats. Um, I think that there's a disconnect uh, with the waterfront community and the public at large um, that can be improved over time. And I hope to be a part of that as a kind of representative at large of the residents uh, of Moro Bay. Um, I have a a, a financial background from from college uh, and a few years uh, as a professional. Um, I was a public auditor uh, of local governments uh, early in my career, so I'm pretty familiar with the kind of shoebox accounting that sometimes takes place at, at, at some very small jurisdictions. Um, and uh, my feeling and based on my experience with Morro Bay, that's kind of what's been happening on, on the harbor. And again, that, I think that that's something that uh, can be, uh, get cleaned up over time. Um, I was super impressed with the candidates applying for CFAC, and I'm always impressed with the people working with CFAC. I would step down in a heartbeat if we could get some of that talent working with Harbor or to have CFAC take on some of the financially related projects uh, dealing with Harbor because uh, their talent could be uh, super useful uh, in a place that um, is short-staffed and focused, you know, on public safety and some other very important aspects that they do well. Um, so those are some of the reasons why I'm interested in in working with the harbor. Um, I think I'll leave it at that, and then I'll just answer your questions as they come up. Good, thanks, Sean. I'm going to go ahead and start this time. Um, as I think you know, Sean, there's a there's a huge need for um, increased revenues. Um, to um, fund the, the Harbor uh, Enterprise Fund. Um, it has suffered from the lack of ability to fund a capital improvement program over the last 20 plus years. Um, we estimate that there are 600 plus thousand dollars a year needed for capital improvements to not only the infrastructure, but also for beautification and other issues along the Harbor. The question is, um, given that information, what would you um, see as the top two opportunities for improving revenues for the Harbor Enterprise Fund? Um, well, I, I think to start with, and I, I'm, I'm not sure this is something that folks at home are, are, are well aware of, um, but the Harbor Fund is an enterprise fund, which means it's supposed to be self-sustaining and hasn't been really for some time. And when I say it hasn't been, uh, the fund is not insolvent, but it has been unable to complete the improvements that are tied up in the legalese of the actual Harbor Enterprise Fund. Now, I know that there's a movement uh, that may end up on the ballot uh, where folks are pushing for a property tax assessment of residents to basically bridge the gap uh, of financially in the same way that we've already asked the residents of regarding the sewer plant and for public safety on last year's ballot. I think folks at home are, are kind of getting tired of footing that bill. So um, we need to think of creative revenue ways, uh, creative ways to improve revenues. And first off, we really need to take a serious look at 
Harbor Lease Management uh, in a way that didn't fully take place, in my opinion, with the minor revision of Harbor Lease Management policies in 2020. Um, we have appraisals that are 20 years overdue on some of these properties, and we have artificially low rents uh, that were tied into from from past uh, from past lease signings. But this isn't something that only happened decades ago; it's continuing to happen. Um, so I think that the number one thing we need to do is we need to look at all expired leases and immediately put them out to RFP or re revalue them at, um, at today's prices rather than looking back to 1993 appraisals, which are continuing to be uh, be used for some of these rental amounts. Um, it actually cost about the same to rent a small private boutique retail space downtown as it, as it costs to on a monthly basis to rent a 3,000 square foot building on the waterfront. And that just, that equation just doesn't balance. Now, I also strongly support improves uh, physical improvements on the waterfront so i'm open to things like the property tax assessment or alternate ways to raise funding as long as those are conditional upon structural or systemic changes regarding the management of those lease sites because those lease sites are what are supposed to self-support harbor and it just hasn't happened great sean thanks so much i appreciate that council member heller please your question if you have one I do. Thank you, and welcome, Sean. Uh, <clears throat> you play an important role on subcommittees and a number of different different functions, and I'm happy to see you applying for this position. Uh, if you could identify one single issue that's the key issue to help the harbor, what, what would that be, that one issue? I think in terms of one, if you if you had to if you had to pin me on one issue, I think it would really be something about the public friendliness of the waterfront space, um, and um, you know because that's something that we see on a daily basis. And so when you walk past, uh, let's say like a Stax or a yacht club, and you see six foot privacy fencing around like for like a hundred linear feet on the waterfront, then pedestrians can no longer see any of the water, and they can't see the 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 boats right there and that 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 lack of like interactivity or being able to see what the working waterfront is that we kind of advertise or talk about i think really hurts our product and the waterfront experience and i think there's so much opportunity because if you're six foot three like me and you can see over the fences there's cool stuff back there um if you actually kind of related to that if you um if any of you head up to and and i'm sure uh, jen knows this because her office is right near there but if you head up to doran's this week and look out over the bay, it's the best view that you've seen in years, in part because the off the hook building just got demolished. And we see the value of being able to literally physically see the water um, because of that 15 foot height uh, limit at the boatyard. Um, being able to physically access the water, being able to physically access restro uh, restrooms, be being able to know where those restrooms are, walking along well-marked paths with excellent signage, and, and really being able to interact with the water and our fishing community is what non-boating Moro Bayans want, it's what visitors want, and it's hopefully what the waterfront community should want as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, Council Member Addis, please. Hi, Sean. It's good to see you, and I'm glad you're applying again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, similar question to what I had on other boards. You know, a lot of people apply um, for committees and serve as volunteers and have a very high level of knowledge and attention to detail. As the liaison to HAB, I've always felt like it was HAB's role um, to sort of give high level input to um, work on the council's work plan to keep the ball moving forward. So how would you differentiate your role as a volunteer on HAB with that of staff whose job it is to facilitate, to provide information, um, and our employees of the city? Yeah, I, th I think I think there's some give and take. Certainly, there's a there's a, a level of respect for the for the skills and the background and experience of our staff. Um, 
uh, I'm proud of our Harbor Department in, in, in many ways. Um, they, they do so many things well. Um, I, I do think that there's some aspect of, you know, simply looking at council goals and figuring out how we can apply those at the at the harbor level or the, at the departmental level. Um, just taking, you know, the, the, I, I just happen to pull up the city goals, the most recent ones that are published, which are back from, you know, 2019, 2020, and three of the four goals, uh, achieve economic and fiscal sustainability, improve public infrastructure, improve public infrastructure and improve community engagement with the community are three goals that you know, to some degree may have eluded Harbor. And so at, at a high level, um, that's a, that's a disconnect that we need to bridge. Um, and that's, um, it, it, it's a challenge because there is a kind of, uh, a kind of bubble there insulation on, on the waterfront and, um, it's something that we want to be respectful of, uh, but also uh, bring awareness to, to the people of Morro Bay who know nothing about what's going on on the waterfront, and they they definitely should. Um, problems on the waterfront are Morro Bay's problems, and yet people at home don't know either that these problems exist or why they exist. And and it's just a it's a matter of communication and um, and kind of bridging the gap where where information gaps exist. Um, and then addressing problems head on with like much clearer transparency about what the problems are and how we might solve them. Thank you, Sean. And uh, Council Member Barton, please, your question. Well, I'd like to um, give my time to you, Sean, to pick one other uh, issue, one other burning issue that um, you are hoping to uh, address. Hmm. Give me one second to look at my list. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you had one. <laughs> um, in terms of management logistics, I think this is a, a, a rhetorical question that I, I I keep coming back to myself. If I owned you know, the city of Morro Bay owns the waterfront essentially, or we've been we've been appointed custodians of the Tidelands Trust, which is a huge responsibility that we sometimes forget to take seriously. I think. Um, so when when I ask myself if I owned if I owned uh, fifty. Uh, 50 pieces of real estate on the waterfront in, on the central coast. Um, how would I manage them? Um, this is, it, it's a, it's a, it's a huge question that, that needs to have, take us, you know, we need to take a serious look at not whether it's at the uh, Harbor advisory board level or council level. Um, we need to look at things like timing of appraisal, um, audits of uh, gross percent sales tax, which, you know, seems to have flown under the radar for, uh, for decades. Um, I know personally that I, you know, I've, I've submitted some public records requests just to kind of scratch the surface on a kind of citizen's audit and have met dead ends and roadblocks. Um, and that just can't be. We have a $2 million budget at, at, at the Harbor Enterprise Fund. I know that um, when I was working at, on, on TBID, that was a budget half the size, a million dollar budget. And we regularly received uh, spreadsheets, monthly reports, et cetera. And yet uh, on the Harbor, if you look at uh, their agendas, we, they, you know, we're looking at more like two sentence agendas with an oral announcement from a finance ad hoc committee. and. You know, I, I just don't think that cuts it in terms of transparency. We need to be out there and public about these lease terms, about what sites are uh, coming up for expiration so that we can get those out to public RFPs and stop allowing these like two, three, four, five year gaps of kind of dead time where we lose revenue. Thanks, Sean. Um, Thank Council Member Ford, please. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, Sean. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, I'm looking at all my questions I have written down. They've all been checked off. Um, so I guess I'll just ask you this. You are so involved with all of the boards and your input, your valuable input and your knowledge of Morro Bay. So my question to you is what inspires you or what has inspired you to be so involved in our community? Um, because you put a lot of time and energy into it. Um, and I'm just curious what fuels that uh that energy what what keeps you going and keeps you involved well, you 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 want me to tell you what i tell my shrink no. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, well to, to to be honest I, I i've tried to whittle down the number of things that i care about <laughs> and it's really hard um <laughs> i uh 
because I go all in on the things that I care about and therefore can't let them go. Um, some of those you guys are probably well well aware of, one of which is the harbor uh, finance situation, Coleman Park, um, public access on the waterfront, some other things like that. But, you know, you know, as frustrating as it can be, you know, if I, if I don't, I, I feel sometimes that if I don't tune into a meeting or two, something kind of slips through the cracks and it's, it's, I, I feel partly responsible for the city and the residents in that, in that respect. Um, so I, I know one thing personally that, that frustrated uh, me and my neighbors out in the um, in the Beach Street district, uh, I, I, I vowed not to tune into a meeting for a month or so to kind of relax and and take care of myself. And sure enough, during during that one month stretch, the Surf Street stairs got uh, approved for closure uh, by council, and that really uh, frustrated me. And it was pretty heartbreaking, and it's heartbreaking every time I walk by it. Um, and so uh, that's kind of it. I feel like if I'm not doing it, someone might not do it. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I'm here today, uh, subjecting myself to, uh, to more responsibility. <laughs> Great, Sean. I've, I've always appreciated your passion and your tenacity and, and man, your ability to handle a, a diverse and um, large workload and the time that you spend, you know, giving input on so many different things to the city. I just got to say thanks for that, and, and we appreciate it. Um, council members, um, we have one um, applicant for a member at large, and I'll um, entertain a motion if anybody's inclined. Looking for a hand, if I can see one. Hi, right, Council Member Barton, I see your hand. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, move approval of Sean Green for the position of uh, member at large. Okay, we have a motion by Council Member Barton to approve uh, Mr. Sean Green. Do we have a second? Uh, Mayor, I'll second. Second by Council Member Heller. I ask if there's any further input or comments. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and call for the roll call vote, please. Council Member Addis? Yes. Council Member Ford? Yes. Council Member Heller? Yes. Council Member Barton? Yes. And Mayor Heading? Yes. The motion carries 5 0. Congratulations. Well, welcome. Get ready to work, man. We appreciate you being here. Thanks, thanks so much for stepping up to the plate um, again. Appreciate um, all of those that applied for our positions. Um, we'll be going out for our um, recreation um, advisory committee as well. So we look forward to applicants in the community that might be interested in that as we reopen that opportunity. Thank you, council members, for your engagement. Great questions tonight. And uh, we will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. We'll reconvene at 530 for our regular city council meeting. Thank you. Good evening. Be safe and be well.